Hi everyone, this is Will with KL Aviation, and in this lesson we're going to look at charted IFR altitudes on an in route low altitude chart. Here we have in route low altitude chart number 13, and we've zoomed in just south of Helena, Montana, into some mountainous terrain, which will give us a good view of most of the types of altitudes that we can expect to find on a low altitude chart. First, we'll get started with the MEA, or minimum en route altitude. Minimum en route altitudes are going to be depicted in black lettering along the course that they correspond with. I have a couple examples here. On Victor 86, the MEA is 10,500 feet between the Whitehall VOR and the Copperstown VOR. This 10,500 feet is going to guarantee you obstacle clearance on that route along with nav aid reception along the entire route. So as long as you stay at 10,500 feet, you can guarantee that you are clear of all obstacles and that you can navigate along that route. It's important to note, however, that the MEA will not guarantee you communications coverage along the entire route only navigational coverage. So there may be areas where you're not able to talk to air traffic control. Now this is an example of an MEA for the entire route. So the MEA is 10,500 feet for the entire portion of Victor 86 between Whitehall and Copperstown. If you see a symbol that looks something like this with the two T's, that indicates that the MEA changes between those two segments of the route. So we can see that right here on Victor 257, the MEA is 11,000 feet. Whereas after the change, the MEA is only 10,000 feet. Next, you can have MEAs that run in two different directions. Let's take a look here at Victor 343 and you'll see a 10,800 with an arrow pointing off to the northwest and 8,300 with an arrow pointing to the southeast. This indicates that the MEA going northwest is 10,800 feet and if you're traveling southeast on Victor 343 your MEA is 8,300 feet. This is due to the fact that if you're traveling to the northwest you'll notice that the next altitude after our changeover is 11,000 feet. You're going to have to climb going northwest, so they want you to be at a higher altitude to prepare for the climb instead of being lower and having to do a very steep climb in order to meet the next minimum en route altitude. It's also important to note that the MEA might not be over the designation of the airway. In some cases, as we've seen down here on Victor 257 and Victor 86, the MEA is actually right over the depiction of the airway. However, the MEA for the segment of this portion of Victor 343 is just over a segment. It's not over any depiction. So you have to look along the entire route when you're looking for the altitude that you need to fly if you would like to fly the MEA. The next altitude we're going to talk about is the MOCA, or Minimum Obstruction Clearance Altitude. MOCAs are depicted on in route low altitude charts nearly the same way as an MEA, only with a little asterisk right here in front. So here on this route, there's a MEA of 13,000 feet and a MOCA of 10,800 feet. If we come over here to the northeast, there's an MEA of 10,000 feet and a MOCA of 9,400 feet. So if you need to know the minimum altitude that you can fly between two, two fixes, just look for the asterisk. The MOCA is going to provide you with the same obstacle clearance as an MEA, so 1,000 feet over flat terrain and 2,000 feet in designated mountainous areas. However, it's not going to provide you guaranteed navigational signal coverage between the two fixes. 
the MOCA is only going to guarantee you navigational coverage within 22 nautical miles of the nearest navigational aid for the route. So if we're here on uh, Victor 365, the nearest navigational aid that we're going to be able to find is right here at the Bozeman VOR. So this 9,400 feet is going to guarantee us that we're going to be able to clear all obstacles between the Bozeman VOR and SWED. However, it's not going to guarantee us that we're going to receive the Bozeman VOR any further than 22 nautical miles from the VOR. All right, let's clean up the picture just a little bit here. Okay, next we're going to talk about minimum crossing altitudes. Minimum crossing altitudes are exactly what they sound like. They're the minimum altitude in which you must cross a nav aid or a fix. Minimum crossing altitudes are going to be depicted on the chart with an MCA and then some letters and numbers below which indicate which directions you have to abide by the minimum crossing altitude. You kind of have to hunt around for MCAs sometimes because they aren't necessarily co-located with the fix. Here we have the Bozeman VOR, which is actually way over here. And the minimum crossing altitudes associated with it are listed below the VOR box, not co-located with the VOR symbol itself. So keep an eye out because there might be a minimum crossing altitude that you're not aware of. The easy way to figure out if there is, though, is this little flag right here. Everywhere that has a minimum crossing altitude is going to have this little flag with an X in it. So if you see that, you know that you're going to have to start hunting around for what the minimum crossing altitude really is for that area. So in this instance, the minimum crossing altitude at the Whitehall VOR, if you're on Victor 21, traveling northbound, so you're somewhere down here, going this way, is 9,300 feet. If you're on Victor 86, going westbound, so you're somewhere out here, headed towards the VOR, the minimum altitude that you can cross the Whitehall VOR at and still maintain your clearance and MEA is 9,100 feet. If you look at it, it makes a little bit of sense on Victor 86. Your MEA is 8,500 feet prior to the Whitehall VOR. After you cross the VOR, your MEA is 10,500 feet. That's a 2,000 foot change in altitude. And I'm guessing there's probably a pretty big mountain where that changes. So the FAA wants you to cross Whitehall higher than the 8,500 MEA so that you're able to reach 10,500 feet in time to clear the appropriate mountains or obstructions. Next, we're going to talk about minimum reception altitudes, or MRAs. MRAs are designed as a way to ensure that you're able to receive proper navigational signal coverage to identify fixes defined by radials from a VOR. Now, on this chart, there are no MRAs depicted. However, an MRA would be at an intersection, such as this divid intersection right here, and they would look much the same as a minimum crossing altitude. There would be a flag that would come out with an R in the middle of it, and then they would have an altitude listed. That altitude would guarantee you that you're able to receive that intersection on the airway. So DVID, you may have to be at, let's say, 12,000 feet in order to properly receive the Whitehall VOR 256 radial. The next altitude is the maximum authorized altitude. The maximum authorized altitude is the highest altitude that you can fly on an airway to guarantee signal coverage. 
Where this comes into play is when you might have two navigational aids that have frequencies that are near each other or cause interference and they're so close that if you fly above a certain altitude you might actually be able to pick up both of them at the same time, which case you wouldn't be able to clearly identify which VOR you would be flying to or which navigational aid you would be flying to. The FAA is taking care of this problem by limiting the altitudes to ensure that you're picking up the correct navigational signal. Again, there are no MAAs on this chart. However, they're very simply depicted with an MAA and then the altitude of the maximum authorized altitude. The last altitude that we're going to look at is the off-route obstacle clearance altitude, or AROCA. AROCAs are the large numbers depicted in each quadrangle on the low altitude chart. So 13,400, 13,600. These altitudes ensure that you have obstacle clearance of 1,000 feet in flat terrain and 2,000 feet in designated mountainous terrain. And they're used when you need to plan a flight using RNAV or GPS, which doesn't follow an airway system. Therefore, there's no published MEA or MOCA for your route of flight. It's noted that AROCAs do not guarantee any sort of navigational coverage or communications coverage. They are simply the minimum altitude that will ensure you proper obstacle clearance through the quadrangle in which they're listed. I hope this lesson helped you out in understanding the IFR altitudes on an in route low altitude chart. Please visit us at klaviation.com or leave your comments below. I look forward to seeing you again in the next KL Aviation lesson.